In this video, I will be talking about RADOSCS, which is a realistic anatomically detailed spinal cord stimulation model. This is an open source model that can be found on the CCNY Neural Engineering website. And is, this was created in the CAD software SOLIDWORKS, the 2016 version. So right now I'm opening up the assembly file. These are all the SOLIDWORKS parts which were assembled in this file. So um, this model contains realistic anatomy of the spinal cord that includes um, detailed spinal structures, specific tissue compartments, and vasculature. This model can be used to simulate various high-frequency spinal cord stimulations, DRG stimulations, and even conventional stimulations. So as this model opens up, um, this, is, this model is for the lower thoracic spine because the bones that are structured here are from T10 to T12. So this is T10, this is T11, and this is T12. These are intervertebral discs between each bone, each vertebra. So as we know that the thoracic spine has 12 bones in total. And since this is from T10 to T12, this model represents the lower thoracic spine, your lower back. So this is the intervertebral disc between T9 and T10. This is the disc between T10 and T11. This is the disc between T11 and T12. And this is the disc between T12 and L1, the first bone of the lumbar spine. So you can see the curvature of the spinal cord here. And this is the highlighted structure is the aorta that is found on the anterior side of the bones. Um, so this is the... This is a portion of the descending aorta on the lower thoracic side. So the descending aorta, the thoracic descending aorta begins between T4 and T5 and it keeps descending up to this point. It goes a little bit into lumbar region and this portion is called the thoracic aortic hiatus. So when I zoom, you can you can see that you can see these blood vessels that branch from the aorta and join the blood supply of the spinal cord here. So these are segmental arteries and they join in the blood supply of the spinal cord. I will talk about that in more detail later in the video. So first I would like to talk about the anatomy of each bone. So I'm going to open up the SOLIDWORKS parts file for T10. Okay. Okay. So this is looking at T10 from a posterior view. This is the spinal process. These two um, structures are called the transverse process. This is called, if you look here a little bit, this is called the superior articulate facet. And this part here, this is the vertebral canal. So this is, this is where your actual, your spinal cord, your vertebral column of the spinal cord goes. And so the first region that you found, find inside here is the epidural space. I will talk about that when we go back to the assembly file. So here, if I go a little bit on the lateral side, you see the lamina. This is the lamina. It's also found here. And there is not much variation in terms of this angle between T10 and T12. So there's a lot of variation for even the overall structure and this facet angle from cervical to thoracic, but not much between T10 and T12 of the thoracic. So going back to the assembly file, uh, I will talk about the vasculature and the spinal column in more detail. So I'm going to start by hiding these bones and this so that this is easier to visualize. Okay, so I'm leaving a bone here because I want to show you how this top meninges, this layer just passes through the canal portion of the bone, right? So this, this layer that you see, this is basically a space. This is the epidural space because if you see this boundary that I've highlighted in blue at the moment, uh, let me 
Okay, so this bound, this boundary, right, the one that's highlighted in orange, this is the dura. This layer is the dura, and the space between dura and this layer, which is like the outer side of the vertebral column, this space is called the epidural space. There's a lot of blood vessels that are found inside the space that run parallel to the entire spinal cord. I can show these to you by making this, hiding this layer. So you can see there is blood vessels that are running parallel to the entire column. And you can also see the electrodes that we placed here. So let me hide this bone. So these were electrodes that were placed here for the spinal cord stimulation. You can place them at the location of your choice. So currently they're placed inside the epidural space. So you can also see several blood vessels that run in transverse directions, connecting the blood supplies of two parallel running blood vessels. These are found here, here, and here. Okay, so if you look at these structures on the side, let me highlight them, like these. These are called dural sacs. I've made the first two transparent here so that you can see what's underneath. So what's underneath is the dorsal and ventral roots with the dorsal root ganglion, which is this one. So this portion basically is the dorsal root. This portion is the ventral root. Um, and this portion is the dorsal ramus. This portion is the ventral ramus. And this is called the spinal nerve. So dorsal root has several coatings called meninges. So the first coating is the dura. So after the dural sac comes the dura layer, which is this that you see in blue. And it kind of um, flows in with the dura of the entire spinal cord. So basically this dura also encloses the dorsal root. It's the outermost layer of the dorsal root and the ventral root. So going back to the vertebral column here, like I said before, this is the dura, and the space that you see that I've just highlighted in blue, this space is called the subdural space, the space between the dura, this one, and arachnoid layer, or arachnoid matter. So this is called the subdural space. Now, if I hide this dura, you're able to see the arachnoid layer or the arachnoid matter. Now, when I hide the top, um, the dura layer from the dorsal and ventral roots, you're able to see the arachnoid coating for the dorsal and ventral roots. This is also found on the DRG. Um, I'm going to start by hiding some of these blood supplies so that the arachnoid layer is easier to visualize. So now that I've hidden all the vasculature from the epidural space, you can clearly see the arachnoid layer. Now the space that's inside, so you look at this space because this is hollow, right? So this is space. So this space contains the cerebral spinal fluid, CSF. It's found between the arachnoid matter, the outermost layer, and the pia matter, which contains gray matter. I'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. So this outer coating is the arachnoid matter. So when I hide this, you see this is the final coating, the final layer of meninges over the dorsal and ventral roots. So this is the coating of the pia matter. If I hide this arachnoid layer and the CSF that's enclosed inside of it, you will see the pia matter. P 
take a better view right so this whole layer that you're seeing that i've highlighted is the pia matter and that's what covers these dorsal ventral roots and drg now there's something that i forgot to show you let me make all of these transparent okay so now that i've made all of these transparent look at this one look at the drg here there is an electrode that we've placed on top here so this was basically for drg stimulation in console or other modeling software you could place it wherever you like the part that you would like to stimulate and another thing to note are these little these these structures that you see that connect the dorsal root and the ventral root here this is the ventral root to your pia matter and what's enclosed inside this pia matter is your gray matter so this thing that i've highlighted in blue is basically the gray matter this whole area right this is your gray matter so what these things do these structures are called rootlets and they connect your dorsal and ventral roots to your gray matter. These are found throughout. So you can see here, you can see them here. They're coming from your dorsal and ventral. In this case, since I'm only showing you the top view, this rootlet is coming from the dorsal root of this um, DRG. And this is also coming from the dorsal root and it's connecting to the pia matter and going penetrating the gray matter. So you can see this yellow line, right? That's running along the length. It's running parallel to the column of the gray matter. So this is called the Lejeur's tract. I've highlighted it on both sides. And you can see that these rootlets are entering the gray matter through these, these leisure tracks. So basically, if you see here, you can see these yellow markings like here on top. So the, this portion is your dorsal horn. So this and this, these comprise your dorsal horns. And this is your leisure tract. It's a portion of the leisure tract going into the gray matter. So these rootlets are have nerves or axons that originate at the dorsal horn that enter your dorsal root through the dorsal horn. So basically they start here, they go here, and then they enter or project into your dorsal roots through these rootlets same can be said for the ventral side so these two are your ventral horns and these are the rootlets of the ventral horn these rootlets connect to the ventral horn they basically the all the nerve the base motor neurons are found here so the nerves come from here they enter the ventral side they enter the ventral root through your rootlets and they basically so it's like goes here it goes here it passes through the dorsal root it enters the dorsal ram i mean sorry the ventral root it passes through the ventral root it enters the ventral ramus and here same thing the they go from the dorsal horns from the dorsal rootlets enter the dorsal root pass through the drg and enter the dorsal ramus and combine here with the nerve spinal nerves from the ventral root and form the spinal nerve here. So this is clear here. You can also see that there's blood vessels laying right on top and below the pia matter, your gray matter, that run parallel to the column. And there's also blood vessels that run transverse, connecting the blood supplies of these parallel lung running blood vessels another thing to note is that if you look at um, these blood vessels shown well these vessels shown here in yellow 
So these basically, if I show you the bottom right here, you can see that this blood vessel is connecting to this parallel running blood vessel right underneath the pia mater. So this blood vessel is connecting to the blood supply of the vertebral column of the spinal cord and it's allowing blood to flow here and this portion connects to your segmental artery which is branching out from the aorta so basically the blood supply coming from here can go here and go here and connect to the blood supply of the spinal cord you can also see another set of parallel running blood vessels here like these this also connects at this junction. So at this junction, you have this parallel running blood vessel, you have this blood vessel that connects to the spinal cord here, and you have your segmental artery. So this parallel running blood vessel connects to this junction at, so it connects to each of these junctions, right? So it goes from here, then it connects to segmental artery, it keeps going. So this is seen throughout on each side. So this is how the vasculature of the spinal cord just connects so that the blood can flow. Uh, I would like to show you the ventral side. So I'm gonna hide the aorta. I'm gonna keep segmental arteries here. So this is the ventral side. On the ventral side, you can also see, you can see these rootlets, right? You can see these rootlets, they're connected to the ventral root. And they're, on the ventral side, there is no leisure tract. That's only found on the dorsal side. So they simply just connect to the, you can see it penetrates. It penetrates the gray matter and basically connects to the ventral horns here so that the nerve, the spinal nerve can travel. This connection is seen throughout these rootlets. And again, you can see these blood vessels. Oh, and also these blood vessels um, that connect to the segmental arteries here they join the blood vessels running parallel but that are beneath the gray matter so on the ventral side here you can see them binding and even this is connected by these transverse blood vessels that are seen here okay so uh i will hide the pia matter and the gray matter so you can see the white matter clearly this is the white matter again it's the dorsal horns ventral horns and that's the leisure tract it's much more clear now i can make it better by hiding these blood vessels once that run okay so you can see You can see how these rootlets are binding. The other side also. Right here and here. Okay. So this was basically a more detailed um, look into our RADOSCS spinal cord stimulation model. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Thank you.